hello folks welcome to the aero technicians youtube channel today we have a guest um, he's an airline pilot who's based in the middle east so let's i mean i don't want to waste any of your time so let's get to the video if you're ready buckle up and get ready for takeoff tell us about yourselves hello guys this is aj uh, first of all please let me say thank you to dinyawin for this idea and for inviting me here welcome back everyone and happy new year to you i hope you enjoy this video and benefit uh, from what we are going to say and hello everyone uh, for those of you who don't know me um uh, Dinuan Galwata, the content creator of the Aero Technicians YouTube channel and also a very big thank to you AJ for joining me today. What is your work environment like? Um, so the work environment is a non-routine one um, which is very different to your usual Monday to Friday job. Uh, for example we have flights um, in the morning, afternoon, evening and night. Uh, some flights will be short, some will be quite long, like let's say four to five hours each um, each way. Um, so the roster will be a mix of everything, a uh, mix of uh, flights in the morning or in the evening. Um, but usually we fly about four times a week. Well, our work environment is divided into two shifts patterns. So one is eight hour shifts which works from Monday to Friday and the other is 12 hour shifts which can work only four days and three days off it has a pattern and also it's a very mechanical oriented and a dynamic uh, work environment um, one good thing though you won't be sitting in one place and doing the same job for a long period of time you, you might, uh, one day you might work in the doors, next day you might work in the landing gears and the day after you might work on engines. You never know. Once you finish a task, you move to the other one. And also usually as an aircraft technician, you'll be in one area because when the work packages arrive, they divide the areas. Maybe engines and uh, landing gears are one team and doors and fuselage is another team, also cabin. So it can differ so you'll be working in your area in different sections how can one be an airline pilot or aircraft engineer uh, so to become a pilot you need to join a flying school or a flight academy in your home country or in the country where you can live and work so for example if you want to fly in the u.s you, you will need an faa license so it's better to study in the u.s if you want to study in, if you want to fly in Europe, it's better to study in Europe, get your EASA license, which will allow you to fly in Europe, and then uh, you're ready to get a job in Europe. Um, on the other hand, if you want to fly in Australia, for example, it's better to study in Australia because you will need an Australian license. Uh, also, you will need to be at least 18 years old, uh, completed your high school, uh, able to pass a medical test the entry test and also you will have to have around 100,000 US dollars in your pocket. Well, to become an aircraft maintenance engineer, uh, you need basic qualifications of six GCSEs, including C passes on your maths, physics and English. Uh, some countries, they have science. So you need these C passes and then there are two types of schools namely 147 and part 66 modular programs so the difference between these two schools is the period uh, the time taken to become an engineer and also 147s are a bit expensive uh, because they are approved by a civil uh, civil aviation uh, authority and then um, once you completed your uh, modules you have uh, to fill in your logbook that you need to join an MRO or an airline so you join there fill in your logbook depending on your school if it is one four seven three years if it is a part 66 modular program it's five years so you fill in your logbook and send it to a, an author authority civil aviation authority as AJ said 
if you want to work in Europe, it's better to have an EASA license. And if you want to work in America, it's better to have an FAA license. These licenses are different. Or a country like Australia, you might have to have CASA, Civil Aviation of Australia. What specific skills are actually required to be a competent pilot or aircraft engineer? So some basic uh, skills, you have to have a good knowledge of maths, able to uh, read, write and speak um, English. And most importantly, you need to have a positive attitude towards learning and towards others. You're going to be flying and working with people from different countries, different cultures. You will fly with uh, young people, old people, inexperienced, experienced, and you will really need to adjust your attitude and um, able to deal with these guys in a respectful manner. Well, to start a career as an aircraft engineer, you need to have some basic skills, uh, namely their attention to detail and a good level of communication, teamwork and awareness. And last but not least, uh, analytical and also problem solving skills. Is there much importance when it comes to the English language to the jobs mentioned? So English language is extremely important to become a pilot. You will have to take an English test at the beginning of your studies, which they call a radio telephony test. Uh, some countries, they do it in the simulator. Um, others, they do it um, face to face with an examiner. And in some other countries, they do it. Uh, it can be done online as well. Uh, once completed, you will, they will give you a score from four to six. Four is the minimum and six is the maximum you can get. So uh, as far as I know, if you get f score four or five, you will have to repeat the test every few years to keep it current. But if you get level six, then it's valid for life and you will never have to do a radio telephony test ever again. Well, 100% AJ, English is by far one of the most important factors when it comes to aircraft engineering. And why I say like this, because all the technical documentations are in English and your co-worker can be from any part of the world. So you need to have a clear communication with him. So to take that barrier away, the English language has been the international language, recognized language for um, aviation. And also, unlike piloting, we don't have an a, a, any special uh, English language examinations. Um, if you're going into a school and if you fulfill the basic requirement, basic English requirements of the school, that would be enough. Uh, but uh, I'm going to tell you again, you need to be competent in communication wise, also written and also understanding. So you need to have these three at the same level because you need to communicate with someone and you need to read the technical documentation and you need to understand the technical documentation. So yeah, English is really important. What rankings or levels do you have starting from a student? Uh, now talking about pilot ranks, when you've completed all your flying courses and you have a license, then you are ready to join an airline. So hopefully after you get the job with an airline, you will join as a second officer. And after you have around five, 1,500 hours, you will become a first officer, then a senior first officer. Then a few years later, when you have around four to 5,000 hours, uh, you will become a captain. Now, it depends on the airline. Some airlines will upgrade uh, the first officers to a captain position when they have around 4,000 hours. Some will do it when they have 5,000 hours. And in other countries, they do it at the earlier stage when they have around 3,000 hours. So it depends when you're flying, you will get upgraded to a captain position. And then another few years after that, you can become a training captain with the airline you're flying with. If you take aircraft engineer rankings, um, a graduate would start as a trainee aircraft mechanic or trainee aircraft engineer. And you go into the company, you will be starting as a, or end of your probation, you'll be starting as an aircraft mechanic. And then the next level is aircraft technicians or an unlicensed aircraft engineer. 
And after fulfilling that or after filling up your logbook and everything's done, you have uh, your license from civil aviation and a type course, then you'll be promoted as an aircraft engineer, licensed aircraft engineer. And the final, uh, I wouldn't say the final, the last ranking is Cat C engineer who would be like a chief engineer and who who's responsible for the whole aircraft in an, in an MRO. So different companies have different rankings. Some companies, they mix up mechanic and technician and just call them technicians or mechanics. But usual pattern is be a student uh, aircraft engineer, aircraft mechanic, aircraft technician and licensed aircraft engineer, then a CAT-C. Can you tell us about a day in the life of an airline pilot aircraft engineer? Uh, so a working day as a pilot can be very different. Um, as we said earlier, it uh, depends on the uh, flights we are doing. Some flights are very short, some are very long. So for example, if I'm doing a flight to Doha, it takes only about an hour. But if I'm uh, flying to India, it takes four to five hours to get there and uh, to get there. Uh, but usually I get up, have a coffee, check the flight information, which will be in the email, uh, get ready, go to the uh, airport, meet with the rest of the crew, and then head to the aircraft, prepare everything, uh, sign the paperwork, and then we start boarding. And that's it ask for pushback and get going so a typical day in the life of a aircraft engineer would be coffee is a must so you start the day with the coffee head to the um mro and then clock in because time clocking of time is really important and then the next thing we do is check our task cards and check task cards against the part numbers we have so we know what jobs can be completed on this day so after that, we take our task cards, we go to the aircraft. Before going stepping onto the aircraft, we have to do a thorough tool check. So we make sure that none of the tools which were used the day before is still on the aircraft. So we check the tools and then we, uh, if the tool check is good, we just crack on with our work. So which is fixing aircraft. And at the end of the day, we do a tool check again, make sure all the tools are there close the tool box and clock off and you know sign out from the task you got registered on would you give any advice to young enthusiasts who are looking to step into these mentioned job roles now since it's uh, quite difficult to get that first airline job when you finish your studies um, due to the lack of experience um, then i strongly suggest you to do your uh, courses with a, with a school or with a flight academy where they secure you a job with an airline after you've completed all the courses. There are a few airlines which are doing this, um, such as EasyJet, uh, Wizz Air, Air Arabia and Qatar Airways. Um, there are actually a lot more airlines which are offering this. You can search on Google. Uh, you can do this through the MPL route or the usual normal uh, integrated ATPL route. Um, you are more than welcome to check those um, two videos I made specifically on these two courses on my channel. Now it, the best place to do your, your training in my own opinion is Europe. They have really good standards. Uh, yes it's slightly more expensive than other, other places but it's worth it. But again as we said earlier if you want to fly in the US or in Australia for example then it's uh, useless to study in Europe as you will have to repeat the exams again, the flying tests again to get the required licenses to, to, to fly in the US or in Australia. So, uh, but if you want to fly in a country where they accept all licenses, then Europe is a really good choice. One good advice for the newcomers would be uh, fulfill your basic requirements given by your aircraft maintenance school and then do your homework, uh, check out some schools, like see what they offer, see the connections they have with airlines. And also there are different apprenticeship schemes who works with the airline. So you can have a look at them as well. And also punctuality, attitude and discipline are at utmost importance when it comes to aircraft maintenance engineering. So before stepping into a career in aircraft maintenance, you should sort them out first. So.
well guys this is it from us and also don't forget to check out aj's youtube channel aj flights and everything you need to know about as an air, um as an airline pilot or a student pilot or an aviation enthusiast he he just break down everything from being a ppl pilot student pilot atpl and how to reduce cost and how to get a job so he got a lot of content there do have a look and also thank you aj for joining me today this is it for today guys if you like this video and you, and you would like to see more in the future then please don't forget to give us like and subscribe and please drop in the comment section below whether you want to be an aircraft engineer or an airline pilot and we'll see you next time thanks again for watching goodbye